here we see a regular plain old boring cube. The red vertices of this cube look like brothers from the outside. But look closer and some of them seem to like each other more than they like others. As if they were in families. And the bigger the cube, the larger and more interesting these families. Let's explore what it means to be a member of one of these families within a cube. To do so, we'll need to connect these geometric objects to algebraic ones. Start with a simple square. It has two dimensions or axes and each axis can take values 0 or 1. Let's clone the x-axis into an algebraic object that can take values 0 and 1 and do the same for the y-axis. Each term in this algebraic multiplication corresponds to one vertex of the square. Let's make a journey from 0, 0 to 1, 1. Halfway through our journey, we run into a plane with these two points that are merely permutations of each other, so we can combine their terms. In summary, the coefficient of a to the power 0 came from the bottom left point, a to the power 1 from the middle plane and a square from top right. For a 3D cube, we'll need three of the algebraic terms. As before, we start from 0, 0, 0, which corresponds to multiplying all the constant terms of the algebraic expression giving us 1. And then we move along the main body diagonal until we hit a plane a third of the way. This plane intersects three points that are basically permutations of 1, 0, 0. Since there are three such points, we end up with the coefficient of 3 times a. We keep moving along the main diagonal until two thirds of the way we hit another plane that again touches three points. And these three points each contribute two ones and one zero, making for the algebraic term of 3a square. And finally, we reach the last untouched point which is 1 1 1 corresponding to a cube. Some of you will recognize these as binomial coefficients. 1 plus a cube equals 3 choose 0 a to the power 0 until 3 choose 3 a cube. Let's take a few seconds to digest this. And now let's raise the stakes and expand our cube so that each axis can take three values. The three possible values are 0, 1 and 2 and one term for each dimension. This time, let's recognize in advance that this is 1 plus a plus a square whole cube and write out the algebraic expansion. Note that the coefficient of a is still 3 but that of a square has increased to 6 and that's because the second plane has room to expand within our cube. Now let's bring back our body diagonal and notice that three of our points are equidistant from it and if you look at their coordinates, do you notice anything? They are permutations of each other. Similarly, the three other points lie on a larger circle and are also permutations of each other. I thought of a cool name for these, permutation rings. Anyway, the six points on the second plane make for the term 6a square. Remember the lone yellow point from our previous cube? It too has room to expand and touch 6 additional points making for a total coefficient of 7a cube. The vertex in the center has coordinate 1 1 1 and the 6 vertices on the permutation ring are permutations of 0 1 and 2. We run into two more triangles which are the coefficients of a4 and a to the power 5 and finally we run into the last point of the cube which corresponds to a to the power 6. Let's take a step back now and go from a 3D cube with 2 terms to 3 terms to 4 terms and so on. I call this visualization screaming into the void. But enough of 3 dimensional space which is familiar and boring. 
what would we see if we extended this to four dimensional space? This time we'll need to start with the algebra. Let's say each axis can take two values 0 and 1 and we'll need four terms because this is 4D space. Let's recognize this as 1 plus a to the power 4 and write out the algebraic expansion. Now what interesting shapes will our three coefficients form? When our cube was three dimensional, the coefficients of the algebraic terms formed 2D planes. But now our cube is four dimensional. So we can expect 3D objects now. For example, to imagine the 3D object formed by the coefficient of a which is four, think of three bowling balls in a triangle and then imagine putting a fourth bowling ball on top of them and then joining their centers. This 3D object is called a tetrahedron. And the other four, which is the coefficient of a cube, also happens to be a tetrahedron. And finally for the coefficient of a square, use four bowling balls to form a square and add two more from the top and bottom. Then connect their centers like so and you have a double pyramid. Now let's go ahead and visualize all of these objects on an actual 4D hypercube. And there you have it, binomial coefficients visualized on a hypercube. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe.